Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I've got six dessert ideas to share with you. They're not only delicious, but also actually kind of good for you. Of course, these are still treats at the end of the day, but treats that won't leave you feeling super sluggish afterwards. All of these recipes are pretty low effort as well and very quick to make. Yeah, they take about 10-ish minutes. Also, quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring these sweets. I'm already so in love with this first recipe. The inspiration came from someone named Winter. Grab a small bowl and add some white tahini. Also add some unsweetened baking cacao, some liquid sweetener of choice. I only had agave syrup at home, which I know isn't the healthiest choice I could have made. To bring out the chocolate flavor even more, I added a pinch of salt and some vanilla. Now mix it up thoroughly. I then adjusted the consistency with some more cacao. This one is gingerbread flavored. Pop this into the freezer. Keep it in there until you're happy with the consistency. After 10 minutes exactly, it looks something like this, like a thick chocolate frosting. That could be really good with some fruit or on crackers or cookies. I ended up freezing this for 20 to 25 minutes, and then I was able to roll it into little balls, coating them in some cacao powder before serving. Um, yeah, so these require two minutes of actual work, and then just a little bit of waiting around. If for some reason you don't end up eating these in one sitting, you can keep them in the fridge for up to a week. For this next recipe, we've got a healthier cherry crisp or cherry crumble to make, which uses the stovetop only. Start with the topping. To a small to medium sized skillet, add some cashew butter. If you can't find cashew butter, use almond. Um, add a little bit of actual vegan butter. A tablespoon and a half goes in there, as well as some coconut sugar, some salt, vanilla, a handful of chopped nuts of choice, I went for almonds, and some ground flax seeds. Let everything melt together over medium, and then add the last ingredient, which would be small cut oats. Let this all toast for about five minutes. Stir frequently, keep an eye on it. I, I burned my first batch. For the filling, you simply need just some frozen cherries. I think the ones from the glass should also work. Add the cherries to a small saucepan, together with a bit of cornstarch that's been dissolved in water. And just, yeah, mix it all up. Let it come up to a boil to activate the starch. Divide the cherry mixture evenly between three small glasses or ramekins, and then top everything off with equal amounts of topping. You can also just use the topping and have it as sort of like a granola cereal. Someone who goes by the name of Ice Queen suggested this pumpkin cream cheese mix. I first had to warm up the vegan cream cheese slightly, just for like a minute or two over medium, because it was a bit stiff. Then combine the softened cream cheese with some pumpkin puree, some cinnamon, perhaps some other pumpkin-y spices, and a bit of maple syrup. Feel free to add some more pumpkin. I ended up adding one tablespoon of pumpkin puree total. I just kept adding more until I was happy with the pumpkin-iness of it all. This actually tastes like heaven. You can dip some fresh fruit in there or have it atop of a like a rice cake or a corn cake. My sister requested that we add some popcorn as well, which was pretty good. Though I did like the apple version better, gotta say. Next up, we've got this delicious caramel sauce that is just so perfect on anything. Banana, for instance. Ice cream, yogurt, banana ice cream. In a small saucepan, combine the following things. Coconut sugar, oat cream. Definitely also add some salt. And then I spontaneously decide to add some coffee, which, you know, gives this a bit of a coffee caramel type of vibe. Yeah, mix it all up and let it simmer for about 10 minutes or until you're happy with the consistency. And yeah, serve this with whatever you want. Now let's move on to the thumbnail recipe. These, my friends, are some hidden beetroot lava cakes. And I promise you that you can taste the beet. Preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Melt down some dark chocolate. Go as dark as you want. I would recommend 70% here. 
break it apart into little pieces. I just put it into the oven as it was preheating. Um, yeah, I've got some more in-depth notes on chocolate melting in the description. Make sure you read that. Yeah, so as the oven is preheating and the chocolate is melting, go ahead and line a muffin tray with muffin liners. Add all the cake ingredients to your blender and blend it all up. We've got some ground almonds, some spelt flour, coconut sugar, a bit of vegetable oil, some coffee powder, some salt, baking powder, the melted chocolate, and one lonely cooked beetroot cut into chunks. Also add lots of non-dairy milk. Blend it until smooth and then add the cacao that you forgot. Distribute the batter evenly between the muffin liners. I actually only got 11 out of this since I filled them up quite generously, but you can also make 12 slightly smaller ones. Um, bake these guys for eight to 10 minutes. I would say nine minutes exactly at 200 degrees Celsius is the sweet spot here. Take them out of the oven and then serve them immediately if you want them to have that typical melty center. I, I love these so, so much. It's like the perfect quickly baked dessert there is. Someone named Toma gave us a variety of interesting snack ideas to choose from. Um, the first one, the, the fried tofu and honey one, I, I wanna just bookmark it because that does sound interesting to me. Um, but then they say rice paper rolls with apple filling, and that inspired me to create a little wintry apple version of my mango and coconut rice paper bites. Cut an apple into little chunks. Transfer those to a small saucepan, add some lemon juice, cinnamon, and perhaps also some other wintry spices such as cardamom or nutmeg. Bring this up to a boil and let it simmer over medium for about six minutes or until the apple has softened quite a bit. Meanwhile, create a little dipping sauce consisting of cashew butter, hands down one of the best things to exist, cinnamon, salt, and liquid sweetener. Also quite a bit of non-dairy milk goes in there. Mix it all up. The sauce might seem a bit stubborn in the beginning, but just keep mixing until it looks something like this. And now it's time to assemble the rolls. Grab a round rice paper sheet, one that's about 15 centimeters in diameter, plus a deep dish plate filled with room temperature water. Add your rice paper to the bowl. Let it soak for about 20 seconds and then transfer it to a dry surface such as a cutting board. Place a heaping teaspoon of filling to the center of the sheet and then just roll it up like a burrito. First, folding over the side that's closest to you, then fold over the left and the right side and finish it by rolling it away from you. Continue with the rest of the sheets, but make sure to pat the surface dry in between rolling sessions. This makes for, depending on the size of your apple, about five little rice paper bites. Fry these in a bit of vegetable oil inside a non-stick pan for two to three minutes on each side or until golden brown all over. Cook them over medium high. You definitely want them to get some color, but, but not burn, so keep an eye on it. This might be my favorite one out of the bunch, though the, the chocolate beet cakes are a strong contender as well. But yeah, this apple one, it's it's, it's really good. They kind of taste like light mini Apfisch total bites to me. Would recommend. If you try any of these ideas today, definitely let me know how they worked for you. Don't forget to tag me in your recreation photos. And yeah, I hope you have a cozy rest of the day. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace provides you with a wonderful, easy to navigate, all in one platform to build a beautiful website and run your business from. You also have the option to give multiple people access to your 
site so you can all work together on this project whether it's a site for your own little cafe, online store, a blog about your sailing adventures, or to host your new podcast from, which definitely check out Squarespace's audio blog tools if you decide to go and do some podcasting. Get started today, pick a new cool domain and create your own logo. And of course, no worries, all the content that you put on Squarespace belongs to you and only you. Visit squarespace.com slash minarome and use code minarome to get 10% off your first purchase of a new site or domain. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for being here as always. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea. Bye. Honey, you're my 13. Holding hands under